You are very welcome to our Sunday School broadcast for the 29th of August, 2021. And our topic is a courageous queen. A courageous queen. Let's pray. Father, we come before you again, O God. Yet we come afresh. And we pray, Lord God, that you help us today. Precious Holy Spirit, we hand over this lesson time into your hands and pray, Lord, that you anointed your wisdom. Lord, will be upon us. Lord, that we will do this assignment with all that heaven has for, to give to us. In the name of Jesus, I pray for my brethren, Lord, who are listening. Lord, that you give us listening ears, understanding hearts, that everything that God has prepared for us today will not go wasted. But Lord God Almighty will take them in and will receive the ability to act on them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering us, Lord, because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A courageous queen. Let us take our first reading from Esther. Esther chapter 3 and verses 1 to 15. Esther 3, 1 to 15. After these things, King Ahasuerus promoted Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the, Ag the Agite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes who were with him. And all the king's servants who were within the king's gate bowed and paid homage to Haman, for so the king had commanded concerning him. But Mordecai would not bow or pay homage. Then the king's servant who were within the king's gate said to Mordecai, Why do you transgress the king's command? Now it happened when they spoke to him daily and he would not listen to them that they told it to Haman to see whether Haman's word would, whether Mordecai's word would stand. For Mordecai had told them that he was a Jew. When Haman saw that Mordecai did not bow or pay homage, Haman was filled with wrath, but disdained to lay hand on Mordecai alone, for they had told him of the people of Mordecai. Instead, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews who were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, the people of Mordecai. In the first month, which is the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast Po, that is the Lord, before Haman to determine the day and the month until it fall on the twelfth month, which is the month of Ada. Then Haman said to King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered and dispersed among the people in all the province of your kingdom. Their laws are different from all other people, and they do not keep the king's law. Therefore, it is not fitting for the king to let them remain. If it please the king, let a decree be written that they be destroyed, and I will pay 10,000 talents of silver into the hand of those who do the work to bring it into the king, king's treasure. So the king took his signet ring from his hand and gave it to Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agatha, the enemy of the Jews. And the king said to Haman, The money and the people are given to you to do with them as seem good to you. Then the king's scribes were called on the thirteenth day of the first month, and a decree was written according to all that Haman commanded to, to the king's satraps, to the governors who were over each province, to the officials of all people, to every province according to its script, and to every people in their language. In the name of King Ahasuerus, it was written and sealed with the king's signet ring, and the letters were sent by courier into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to annihilate all the Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, 
on the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Ada, and to plunder their possession, a copy of the document was to be issued as a law, every province being published for all people that they should be ready for that day. The courier went out, hastened by the king's command, and the decree was proclaimed in Shushan, the citadel. So the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city of Shushan was perplexed. Praise the Lord. Now, we know the transaction that brought Esther into the palace of King Ahasuerus as queen. I would advise us to go back and read the whole book of Esther, about 10 chapters, but it's not a lot. So we can get the background. Esther had become queen, but let us know that though she was queen, she didn't have free access to the king. What a marriage! But Haman was at about the same time promoted to the post of prime minister. Therefore, as prime minister, he was supposed to, people were supposed to bow to him as he passed, as people bowed to the king himself. But Mordecai being a Jew and who was a gate man refused. He said, uh -uh, I'm not bowing to this wicked man. Let me just say that there is wickedness and there is wickedness. Wickedness past wickedness. Why did Mordecai bow to the king but not to Haman? It must be that Haman had already shown signs of wickedness and Mordecai knew this. In fact, they called him the enemy of the Jews. So I'm not uh, there must have been a few things that happened in the past that he hated the Jews. So to put the icing on the cake, Mordecai refused to bow to him. Now, to prove that this man was actually wicked, what stopped him from saying, okay, Mordecai, let's kill him? No. But his wicked heart, his extreme wicked heart, will not let him. Oh, killing Mordecai is nothing. Let us, in fact, killing the Jews in the capital city is nothing. Let us kill all the Jews in the 127 provinces, countries, ranging from India all right through to Africa. That is wickedness. Like the people we know in history, probably somebody like Hitler, the, he wanted to just finish the Jews. That was his plan. And therefore he tricked the king to give him freedom to sign a decree that all the Jews, all the Israelites be wiped out. Wow, what a wicked man. What he did not understand was that God had made a covenant with Abraham, their father. Let's look at um, Genesis chapter 12. Genesis 12, 2-4. Genesis chapter 12, verses 2-4. to I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. <laughs> so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lord went with him. Okay. Haman did not know something. He didn't know that the Jews had a covenant on their heads. They had an agreement of protection, of provision. And God says, if you bless them, you are blessed. If you curse them, you are cursed. 
If you want to kill them, you end up being killed. He didn't know. He fell on the wrong side of that covenant. And in fact, in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 22, and in Psalm 105, 14 to uh, 15, God has said, Touch not the Lord's anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Don't touch them. They are the apples of my eye. Let me tell you, man of God, woman of God, child of God, there is a no touch anointing upon your head. Satan cannot just walk in and kill you. No, it's not possible. Everybody, it doesn't matter who they are that are fighting against Christians will lose. It's as simple as that. Everybody that, are, that is fighting against you as a child of God, they are coming on the wrong side. They are stepping on the wrong side of that covenant. You will say, well, I am not an Israelite. Yes, you are. In Christ, the Bible says we have all become children of Abraham. And the Bible says that the New Testament is established on better promises. Therefore, as a child of God, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter how you are. It doesn't matter how things are with you. I want you to learn. And I want you to lift your head high. And know and understand that the Bible says that no weapon. That the Bible says, look, I have engraved you in the palms of my hand. And your walls are continually before me. In Christ, we have become children of Abraham. And therefore, the covenant of Abraham is on our heads. It's as simple as that. Praise the Lord. Now, what is, why would a Christian in Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2. The Bible says that the hands of the Lord are not short. That he cannot deliver. His ears are not deaf that he cannot hear our cry. I just want to digress and warn us. If you are a child of God, keep away from sin. Because in Isaiah it says, your sins have separated you from your God. And your iniquity so, though you're a child of God, though we are covenant people, if you wander into enemy territory, then you might get hurt. That is the condition, the part that we are supposed to play as children of God is to obey God and live under the covenant of God. Live within the boundaries and the territories of God. When we wander away and things will not be the same. It happened to the nation of Israel any time they started worshipping idols. The hand of God will not reach them as God would. God will still cry for them. God will still send uh, prophets. God will do whatever he can to protect them. But because they have willingly wandered into Satan's domain, things could go wrong. Therefore, Number one, like I said, you are under absolute protection of God. If we look at Job, Satan said to God, look, you have hedged him in, you have covered him. I have tried many times to penetrate his defenses, but I cannot. That is why he's worshipping you. Job was a child of God. Job was described as perfect. He obeyed God. My brother, as a church, let us stay within the covenant. Let us do away with hatred among us, disunity among us, quarrels among us. No, as long as we obey God, by the grace of God, by the Holy Spirit that he has given to us, no weapon, no weapon. Praise the Lord. So, when... Haman had tried and written everything. And the Bible says he settled down with the king. He settled. On the 13th of December, hey, things will happen. Everybody, the Jews were envied. Even at that time because they were always a progressive people. They were progressive. 
And therefore, when the decree went to any place, hey, kill the Jews and take their possessions. Hey, the decree is that they should not even protect themselves. So kill them, take their possession. People will jump up and say, hey, that is the house I'm going to get. That five-story building belongs to a Jew. I, that's the one I'm going to get. And already, they may have started sharing out the Jewish property. Praise the Lord. But they had another thinking coming. The Bible says that Esther, God had positioned him. God had positioned her. Sorry, God had positioned her as the wife of the king. What a better place. And God had put Mordecai ahead of Haman. The Bible says as the drama unfolded, one night the king could not sleep. And he started reading. He started looking at books. And where would God take him? To the act of Mordecai, where he had protected the king himself. My brother, when your prayer gets into heaven, when God begins to act on your behalf, whoever is holding your protection, whoever is holding your blessing, whoever is holding your promotion will not sleep. And I want you to pray along. And I want you to confess and proclaim and say, God, from today onwards, Whoever is blocking my way, oh God, take him aside, push him aside. And whoever has my promotion in his hands, let him not sleep until he has done it. The king could not sleep. The king could not sleep. Why? And he kept reading. And then he found the good deed. He says, this Mordecai, this Mordecai, he is the one who saved my life. What promotion? You see, God is a master planner. God just delayed that promotion until the right time. What good have we done? What promotion? What reward has he gotten? They said nothing. Wow, somebody who saved my life? Nothing. Okay. Who is there? And Haman, God has so arranged that Haman came in at the same time. My friend, come. You are my advisor. You are my vice president. So I want to do good to somebody who did me good in the past. What good should we do to him? And Haman rejoiced in himself and said, Hey, there's nobody that he want to bless except me. I'm the one. And I have money. I don't need anything else. Let me have the last glory. The king says, Yeah, I'm waiting. He said, Get a horse. Your own horse. You, can you see how greedy and proud this man was? Get your own horse. Get your own uh, regalia and put the man on your own horse and dress him up like a king and let one of your trusted chiefs lead him through the whole street of Susa shouting, this man is blessed of the king. This man is promoted. Hey, and the king looked and the king said, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. What a coup. He wanted to now act as a king. He was really proud and wicked. And the king said, okay, call Mordecai. And Mordecai appeared. Haman would have looked and said, Mordecai cannot be leading me. He's only a servant, a gate man. And God said, you see this Mordecai? Just put him on the hook. Everything that you have said, just do exactly for him what you have said. What a humiliation for Haman. And he had to do that. That was number one. When he got home and started telling his friends, he said, but the kind of humiliation I got today from this same Mordecai. And the wife was wise enough to say, if Mordecai is actually a Jew, I've heard their stories from the time of Abraham. I've heard their stories. How they, if he is a Jew and you started falling and being humiliated, God will not stop until he has finished you. And therefore, Events continue to unfold till when Mordecai knew that even with his own little glory, even with his little glory, that there was still a death penalty hanging on him 
and on the whole nation because of him. And he had therefore appealed to Esther, Esther, go and tell the king that the decree that has been issued will kill you, you Esther, and the rest of us Jews. And Esther said, hey, this is the way the law is. I can't just go for 30 days. He hasn't called me. So I can't just go. If I go into the king, there's only one penalty. They will kill me. And in Esther chapter 7, chapter 7, 3 to 7, Esther 7, 3 to 7, read. Then Queen Esther answered and said, if I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. For we have been sold, my people and I, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. Had we been sold as male and female slaves, I would have held my tongue. Although the enemy could never compensate for the king's loss, so, the, so King Ahuzarus answered and said to Queen Esther, Who is he? And who is he who would dare presume in his heart to do such a thing? And Esther said, The adversary, the enemy, is this wicked Haman. Okay, so, sorry, please stop there. Let's go back to 6. Esther 6, 1 to 3. That night, the king could not sleep. Okay, Esther 7, verse 10. Esther 7, verse 10. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Okay, Esther 5, 2 to 4. Esther 5, 2 to 4. So it was when the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court that she found favor in his sight and the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. Then Esther went near and touched the top of the scepter. Okay, Esther 4, 13 to 16. And Mordecai told them to answer Esther, Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will, be, will perish yet. Who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me, neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise, and so I will go to the king, which is against the law, if I perish, I perish. Praise the Lord. There are two statements we want to pick out. Number one, who knows whether you came to the kingdom for a time like this? Are you a pastor? There is a reason God put you there at a time like this. Are you a businessman? There is a reason. That God put you there at a, at a time like this. Are you a doctor, engineer, soldier, policeman, politician? God put you there at a time like this. If you see the plan of God and you fail to engage, then 
God will still bring deliverance. There's no doubt about that. But God will push you aside. That is what Mordecai said to Esther. Are you, this God is a master planner. Wherever you are, in the market, on the road, wherever you are, it is not a coincidence that you are there. I want you to make up your mind like Esther and dive in and say, if I perish, I perish. I am going to do the will of God. If I perish, I perish. I am going to give my money. If I go hungry, I go hungry. I am going to go witnessing. If I perish, I perish. I am going to fast and pray for deliverance for the people of God. If I perish, I perish. I am going to speak out for the people of God. If I perish, I perish. I am going to follow God and dive into God. If I perish, I perish. That was what Queen Esther did. And of course, God in his goodness didn't let her perish because she had a job to do. It is time that we Christians arise and do the will of God with one mind, with one purpose. If I perish, I perish. If we look at Isaiah 49, 24 to 26, God says there, can the lawful captive of a righteous man be delivered. Whoever is chasing you, like God delivered the Jews from the hand of the wicked Haman, God has said that he will give the wicked man his own flesh to eat. That person does want to drink your blood. As long as you are a child of God, he will end up drinking his own blood. She will end up drinking her own blood. Why? Because your blood is precious to God. It will not fall to the earth anyhow. Praise the Lord. Every decree in Isaiah 54, Isaiah 54, 17, God says there, he said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He says, every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn it. Look, it doesn't matter where the decree has been proclaimed. That can be reversed. That can be turned against the enemy. That brings us finally to our own part. It brings us to our own part in the victory. Look, it doesn't matter who is chasing you. God is greater than the person. I heard a man of God preach. I was only a few weeks, a few months born again. And I went to this leaders conference. And that man of God, he says that a man of God has to grow to that point where he would defend himself and defend members of his family. And I thought, isn't it that said that one is it's God that defends all of us. It is true, God defends us. But God has given us his word. God has given us his spirit to decree a thing and see it done. Children of God, let us put on strength. Let us not just lie down and let the enemy walk all over us. Go out. Take a time out. Fast and pray. And make a decree and make a proclamation. And say things. Open your mouth and speak. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. Open your mouth and say, Hey, you wicked man, every of your weapon will return to you in the name of Jesus. Proclaim it. Don't be afraid because God is there. Angels are there to execute your word and my word. Queen Esther eventually succeeded and gave victory to the whole nation. You and I can do the same. Let us pray. If you have heard this message and you are not a child of God pray this prayer after me dear Lord Jesus I accept that I'm a sinner forgive all my sins write my name in the book of life and cancel it from the book of death come into my heart be my Lord and Savior thank you for saving me lead me unto eternity in the name of Jesus God thank you for this message oh God every one of us will receive victory and will receive the strength even to supersede any covenant, any pronouncement, any writing that is against us because we are the apples of God's eye and because there is a no, no touch anointing on our heads. Thank you for giving us victory. Is anybody sick among us, Lord? Stretch forth your hand and heal 
every one of us physically, mentally, and spiritually. Thank you for answering, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen.